What's going on guys? Cerebro here for T3G along with Full Throttle. And we're going to talk about uh, the return of the TV shows. Now, it's been a really weird start since Gotham has only had one episode. It's been almost two weeks. Two weeks now, actually. And um, Agent Carter has had three episodes in two weeks. So right. um, we've got a little bit to talk about. Everything is pretty much coming back this week. Yeah. Uh, so next video we're going to talk a lot more, but... Uh, we definitely uh, have quite a few things to talk about yeah. right now. Um, and I, I think this is just the fastest. Let's start with Gotham. Yeah. What did you think about the return? Uh, as I told you, I was disappointed. Uh, in all honesty, um, the the mid if you watch our mid-season coverage, you know, the mid-season didn't end so hot. It was just an episode. It wasn't anything fantastic. It, didn't, it wasn't thrilling. Uh, and then coming back to the new episode after, what, um, two weeks? Three weeks, whatever it was. About three weeks. About three, three, four, three, four weeks, I think. It felt, it's definitely the first one that came back, and, and, and it came back a lot quicker. Um, it was just an episode. It just There was nothing to it that was, like, awesome. You know, it, okay, we were in the psych ward. You know, we were in, um, what's the place called? I keep Arkham. Forgetting. Arkham, thank you. Arkham, yes, Arkham. Uh, we were in Arkham. You know, we see Gordon being one of the guards. Uh, you know, he's demoted, um, but at the same time, it's almost like there's nothing exciting about it. it I agree. It's just an episode, and it, it's a shame to say that because I have enjoyed most of the season. I've actually enjoyed it more than I enjoyed the first season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but, well, a lot more, but just these last two episodes, it's just been, yeah, I guess... I don't, want to say it. I don't want to say it, but it's been a disappointment because it was just episodes. It was just episodes. There was nothing exciting. There was nothing extra. There was nothing new. There was... It, it definitely didn't feel like they... It definitely didn't feel like they planned on, like, a split season. Yeah. Which, that's been the going formula for five years. Yeah. More. So they definitely... It definitely feels like they didn't... It just feels like... It's just like, like oh, we're going to just, like, make X amount of episodes in, and then in order. Just split it wherever. Right, I mean, like, if you can call it a cliffhanger or even, like, a event at the end, at the mid, mid-season mid point was, like, um, Gordon getting demoted. But even that wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah. It really felt just like another... It really did. It, the show is becoming, I think, a lot more formulaic, and it just kind of feels like you're just taking the next step. You're just taking the next step in the story, and they're going to tell the story, like, whether you want it at a certain pace or not, like, they're going to tell it at their right. pace, and... They're not really. They don't really care how fast you want it or how slow you want it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think it's cool because it looks like they set it up pretty cool to the next episode, which is actually one that was probably yesterday, um, which we still have to watch, so we can't review that. But it looks like that episode, that last week's or two weeks ago episode, the first episode, it looks like it set it up for this coming up episode. But we still have to. I mean, it. it even if it did, that's. One, that's not how you end a mid-season, and two, that's not how you start a mid-season. Like, it's, you gotta get, the biggest thing for me when I complain about any series is you gotta grab attention. If you don't grab attention, you're gonna lose the audience. And once you lose the audience, you're gonna start getting less and less in views, and, and that sucks. Even though if the show is good, and the acting is good, and the writing is good, but if you can't grab the attention of people, you lose views, period. That's why the, there's certain shows that I'll I'll watch all the time because every episode just grabs me. It just it it it, it hooks me and I stay with it and I stay with it to the end and then I can't wait for the next one. Uh, and unfortunately, not you know a lot of these comic book shows they haven't been doing that. And I get it. There's a certain formula that certain people are gonna follow. And in my opinion, the thing that works best is you gotta hook the people. And and if you don't, you might have a issue with the show you might have some troubles with the show maybe retaining the show because views drop uh, even though you're still getting good views they're gonna drop and that's where I feel like they need to step it up because this episode uh, it was I almost want to say it was worse than the mid-season finale episode because yeah at least I mean I would, I would say so yeah I mean there is it was really it was just kind of like Gordon was ready to he, he was he accepted his fate at right. the end, it wasn't a shock. So, the way it could have ended at the end of the previous episode for the mid-season could have said, "You're being demoted to 
to, to Arkham. Like, we're, we're sending you to Arkham to be a security guard. Right. And it's like, dun, 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 cut credits. Right. But no, they had this whole moment where he just accepted his fate. He said, no, 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 they want me to quit. I'm going to go do it. I'm going to do this for, for the sake of it, I guess. And it's kind of like, all right. I mean, they, talk, they, they kind of touched on Barbara's alcoholism and substance abuse, which... I don't like. I think they don't know what to do with that character. They definitely don't. It's just like, like, oh, now let's make her more interesting by making her a drug and alcohol. I abuser. actually am less interested in her due to that because at first she was like, oh, I'm, I'm with you all the way. Right. She was. She was. Side. She was ready to roll, and, like, and then she's, she's ready, like, no. She didn't care if it was life or death. She was with him, uh -huh. and then all of a sudden, one episode happens where she gets kidnapped, which she knew was going to happen because that's what he was telling her the whole time, and then all of a sudden she just leaves. Goes back to the chick and has an issue with uh, substance abuse. It's right. like that and it's was weird just because random. Like, yeah, it was I, extremely random. It was like it, it. It was just. It felt like it was almost forced yeah, just to make was. that character. It absolutely was. And I think I cared for her more when she was trying to be part of his life than when she just randomly just lost and left. And, now and that's she's the, like the, this. The, the, Ever since it started, I was really upset with the fact that they were using Montoya and uh, and Alan. Right. Because those were characters that, in if you follow the Batman books, those are Batman's age characters. So like those are characters that don't that are they're you know ten now or twelve or whatever Batman right. Bruce Wayne's supposed to be. So Montoya is supposed to be like thirty five and work with Batman, not with Gordon. Like it's kind of weird for me. Um, and like now Montoya is uh, a lesbian, which is fine, but like. Barbara has never been portrayed as a, as a lesbian, as far as I'm aware. Right. And but now to like force this relationship out of it. Now I was cool with it being kind of like a thing that happened, and like we're gonna reference it once in a while. It's gonna make things awkward. Mm -hmm. But not like oh I'm I'm like down to be with you. I'm 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 backing you up no matter what happens. And it's like something happens. Gotta go. I'm out. Peace. <laughs> not even not even like not even sit down and talk to him about it. She just straight up left. She was so so determined to stay with him no matter right. what happened yeah she was life or death she was staying there and then all of a sudden without any warning not even sit down with him she just leaves leaves a note and just bounces and it's just it doesn't make any sense to in writing i mean i'm not a writer don't get me wrong but as a person that thoroughly watches a lot of things i mean just pays attention to everything and 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 likes to critique it that just I like that word, criticule. It's yeah. like criticize and ridicule at the same time. Exactly. It's That's like, what I'm is... working. Listen, I'm doing Stephen Amell things sincerely. All right. <laughs> so I'm trying to I'm trying to make my own words, but um, I like to criticule, cr criticize, criticize, criticize. <laughs> I keep messing up. I like to criticize um, certain things. I mean, there's certain things I'll let let pass and just be like, whatever. It it is what it is. But when you take a character. And you try to make her one thing, and then completely out of nowhere, without any warning, just completely change that character, it makes no sense. I mean, you, listen, it's cool to do a shock factor, but in this, in this way, in this form, no. This is, this is just, not even a shock it, factor, this is just like, I don't know what to do with this character, let's try to do this, and it, see how it, it works. Feel, it almost feels, in part, it feels like to me, like they're trying to fill the role that other characters have played in Batman stories in the past. Um, if you look at, um, what's her face, uh, Harvey Dent's wife, in a couple, in one particular portrayal in the um, Dark Victory, in Dark Victory, I think, I'm, I'm spoiling for, for whoever, but if you haven't read Dark Victory, go read it. Uh, but she, not all of it, but she was part of the killer's like there was, I think there were. It's really hard. It's a really hard book to kind of right, get. Right, right. Um, but like she was a killer in that movie, but kind of like in a psychotic way. Like she did it to protect Dent. So I feel like they're kind of forcing Barbara to to be that role, right. to kind of be this like shock factor of like some stuff might happen, and we're just gonna keep you on edge. Like I have no problem with Barbara Gordon being a background character and being uninteresting, but being there. There's I have no problem with that. But, like, but to, to try to make her more interesting by force, I just, like, to have that little bit of a past relationship with Montoya was perfectly fine with me. Because right. then it's like, she's got some history, and then, like, cool, I get it, everyone's got baggage. 
But now it'd be like, oh, she's got some history. Now she's also a cheater, also a substance abuser, and just like it just yeah, stacks it just up, keeps stacking up, and it's just like I said, it's just random, and out of nowhere. And it definitely, and it, like it, took, said, it feels like to me what they did with uh, Matt on on Nip Tuck, where it's just like every week they like decided to do something different with him. Yeah, but even <laughs> even with that, I mean, there was at least some kind of turnaround that causes it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so, something something and, like and, and it took time. It didn't like it was just oh, this is what it is now. It actually took a little bit of time. They they developed into it. Where here was, I'm this. All right, now I'm this, and I hate that. I absolutely right. hate that. I get it if they don't know what to do with her character. If maybe for some reason she, because uh, I know they do tests on characters. They do like polls and stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, screenings or whatever sure. of the character, and then they get to you know hear from people what they think of that character. And I get maybe she didn't test well. But that being said. You don't just, you don't, especially a new show that you're really trying to show, because you saw, you were there, unfortunately I wasn't there, but I believe it was at, it was at Wizard World C2E2 where you got the recording of the, Wizard. Wizard. So when they, they showed were, the, when they showed they the were talking how this is a completely different show, you haven't seen this before, they're definitely taking a new route, new direction, mm -hmm. other shows haven't done this, but it's like, you're really doing something. One of the things that you're doing right now with, with Barbara's character is you're doing what most bad shows do, which is you don't know what to do. Right. You don't know what to do, and you just said, hey, but not even, I don't even let's think that's necessarily a bad show thing. I think they just, you, you get to a point where you want to make everyone interesting, and not everyone has to be interesting. Right. I mean, like, like you just finished Dexter recently. Yeah. And, Everyone on that show ended up having something. Like, yeah. not everyone had to. Not everyone you know? had to, but the thing is, is I feel like those writers did it good. Yeah, they didn't do a bad you know job with saying? it. They like, didn't do it, and it wasn't like flip like that. Right. It was, you know... It took some time. Yeah, like, Which is, like Joey, Joey being a, a, a pretty much a weirdo was kind of the whole show. Right. So, like, his a little bit of spike here and there right. of being even weirder was like, okay, I get it. Like, you're a weirdo. Yeah. Now you've kind of traipsed into some other sure. stuff. But not like, I'm a perfectly normal, happy, I want to be behind you wife. And then, like, Boom. oh, this happens. I, this out. is way too right. weird. I'm going to go hang out with my ex-girlfriend yeah. and, like, do a bunch of drugs. and, and, and It's just, <laughs> it's, it was definitely, I mean, basically coming down to it, I wasn't happy with it. Uh, I... I hope this next episode does something. To, I hope they know, were, yeah. To, I hope they were the season, man. Because renew my hope, I guess, for it because. But it's I Fox. Was, <laughs> yeah, it is Fox. Uh, it is you Fox. know, um, they have, obviously the running joke is if you want a show to die, send Fox. Yeah, Fox, um, Fox, Fox TV shows die very quickly. Yeah, you know? it's and and or, I'm more slowly worried, and miserably. <laughs> I am worried for it because. Um, one of the better writers is on that show. Uh, he's actually one of the creators, I believe. It's uh, the uh, Goyer, Dave Goyer. Yeah, well, I mean, Goyer. Goyer is a fantastic writer, he's but like, I don't think writer. he like he's not the only writer. He can't. He's not. The, he's not the only writer, but I'm just but saying he's, 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 he's probably pitching the, the, the He's yeah. probably probably pitching the overall. Right, plot, sure, you know? absolutely. But I'm just saying he's part of it, so definitely they have a good crew. Uh, the they actors the are the actors are good. I have nothing against the actors, but it's just. When you do, <clears throat> when you do two episodes that just feel like it's something you just threw in, uh, especially when it comes down to mid-season episodes, and 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 there was really nothing that grabbed your, there was nothing. They, especially this comeback episode, it just well. It did, was did you nothing. hear? Did you hear? So right at the end of of towards the end of the episode where like the, the girl gets trampled, um, they there was a laugh, and now there is this internet rumor that that is the Joker laugh. The Joker is already at Arkham. I didn't hear that. Yeah, I it, must have missed that part. I missed it too. Somebody they, they cut it. They cut the portion out, and you know it's on YouTube somewhere. But um, it, it's very much like it sounds like it could be, but at the same time, I, I think people. Not. I think people are really reading way too much into it. Yeah. Um, the only guy I think could be the Joker, and I think they could easily like bring that in, was the the stand up comedian because that's kind of where. If you look at the Killing Joke, if you look at any, really any Joker origin, right? That's like he was a stand-up comedian, was hard on his hard on his luck, and took the, took the 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 Red Hood thing right. to like make some money, make right. some quick cash, um, and I, I think it could work that way because you know 
he's performing for the mob, so sure. like that could easily translate. But, he's, but to be like, oh, he's already at Arkham, like that makes him really old. When yeah, comes he that can't way be, Batman. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, it, and he, again, that's that's presuming that we're taking this in the road of Batman. As sure. we were discussing with the guy at the comic shop, you know, there's some rights issues with the the Bob Kane Bob Kane family right. that own the Batman rights. So we might never get to see anything out of Batman. Right. We no, might absolutely. never get to see like names, any of the original name, like Catwoman, any of that stuff that was created by Bob Kane. We may never see any of it. Right. I mean, and I understand that, and it's uh, you know, it's unfortunate that that kind of stuff gets in the way of good shows or good storytelling mm -hmm. and uh but at the same time i really even even if that's the case even if it's the case where there's lawsuits and certain things are preventing them from using the proper batman story um i don't think you should change the story so much to the point where you're just ruining a lot okay like matoya i don't I don't know her character. I don't... I've never really... I've never been into comics that much that I've known her character. So when you told me, hey, she's supposed to be around when Batman's around, to me that hurts. Because even though I don't know the character, that's a huge difference in a character. That that's, is a yeah, that's major. change. That is an age difference well, it's, it's change. It's one of those things... And like, I understand why they did it. Because there was no established like Gotham like character base in the days of Bob Kane. Like... Pre, pre Bruce Wayne, there's nothing. There, as far as I'm aware, there are no stories that talk about the early days of the Gotham right, PD. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, you know, the early days, like those days of the Gotham PD, when, right. when Bruce Wayne was a young man. All you see but is like, when Bruce Wayne's parents get murdered, and and then like and then you like, see Bruce Wayne growing up, yeah, and like that's, that's the it. Gotham PD that you get to know. So yeah, will there be characters that are from the you know from the future? They ha there have to be. Otherwise, they're just creating all new characters, right. and I think that just gets to be messy. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I can see that. But, I mean, taking something iconic as the Joker and putting them in there already... I, you know, I, I wouldn't I don't, like it. I, 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 wouldn't I don't like it think that's a good route to go, in my opinion. If if that is a case, if that... Like, at least Catwoman's of the right out, age. Right, right. Like, Riddler's going to be really old by the time Batman's back. Yeah, absolutely. Riddler's going to be, like, let's say he's in his 20s. He's going to be a 40-year-old dude. Yeah. He's just going to be creepy. Like, he's, he's not even yeah. going to be... Yeah. He's not going to be cool. He's just going to be creepy. He's going to be yeah, a creepy it's, old Riddler. It's, it's. I mean, I'm 31, so, like, 40 isn't, like, super old, but... Yeah, no, no, <laughs> I get it. But, I mean, it's just, it's... I don't know. I, I hope... I hope it's not true. I hope th I hope the rumor is just that is a rumor. I think I hope it's just people reading uh, yeah. too much into it. I hope so. Uh, because I really really don't don't want to see that happening. I mean, it's just I I love the by the way I I love the Joker character. So I have nothing against Joker. Well, did, it's you, just, did you hear uh, uh, what's his face uh, left Suicide Squad? Um, Will Smith? No, no, no. Because of Will Smith and Jared Leto. The other guy, the guy who was supposed to play the the main, I forget his name. Wow, the guy who was supposed to play like the leader of the team, like supposedly his screen time is less than those two characters, the the Will Smith and the Jared Leto character. But here's which the thing. makes sense to me because those are the main characters. Well, that'll that'll be that'll be another. That's a tangent I don't want to go in right now. Sure, but uh, I'll, we'll talk about that because that's that's interesting. But uh, yeah, basically, I just hope. I mean, I love the Joker character. I like, I love Harley Quinn. Uh, she's been really growing on me lately. Um, but I always enjoyed her as as Joker's. I like the one thing I really enjoyed about this episode. You know, it almost slipped my mind. Uh, the one thing I really, really enjoyed was the fact that they set up an age appropriate um, Leslie. Uh, she, I, I've known the character since the TV show, um, The Doctor. Mm -hmm. She, you know, she helped out Batman. She knows the Bruce Wayne Batman connection. Oh, okay. Um, so she's been, like, for me, she has been part of Batman stories since I've ever watched Batman. Okay. Like, uh, I forget her last name, but the doctor, Le Leslie, forget her last name. The one that was in, mm -hmm. in Arkham. Yeah, the one he helped yeah. out. okay. She, like, she's the one with the, with the gray hair in the Batman cartoon. Oh, okay. Yeah, so oh, she, like, yeah, she's yeah. the one that has like the clinic and all sure, that stuff. absolutely. So she's been around for ages for my, for me personally as far as my Batman experience. So when she came in, I was like, oh, it's, it's perfect. Like, she's the right age. She's the right like, age, in, tw right. in 20, so in, makes sense. in 10, 15 makes years, like, she might have a little bit of gray in her. Right, right. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Right, no, absolutely. No, but yeah, overall, um, I, I wasn't, I didn't hate the episode, but at the same time, there was no, nothing that, 
made me happy about it. So I really, I really want them to to do a better job. If they don't end the season really well, so because it's Fox, I want them to end the season in, in like a conclusive way, yeah. but also leaving it open, which yeah. is hard to do. It is hard really to do, hard to but do. at the same time, it, it has mean, to happen because it, it's it has Fox. to happen because if Fox doesn't like it by the end of the season, I, I'm just surprised. Again, so at least, at least, at least, almost human was canceled like before they finished writing the season, yeah, yeah. and they like finished it for the most part. Like it was kind of like there was stuff on unanswered, but it was like. We're just gonna keep cracking on well, this. I didn't like. watch the last. The last episode was what? Episode thirteen. I didn't watch the last episode, so I can't say for the. Oh, okay. Episode. Yeah, I, I think I think they. It wasn't ended on like a cliffhanger. You know, it wasn't ended in such a way where you're like, ah, oh, more. Right. <laughs> like, uh, unlike uh, when ABC can canceled Flash Forward, which ended on just like a, more. Give me right, more. Right. So I mean, uh, you know, there's definitely a possibility of Fox canceling it because it is Fox, and depending on the. Viewers, I hate to say it. I hate to say it because I think it could be a really good show. I it, think it, it could grow. be a great show I, from the beginning. They just need. They just need I, to like figure like out I what said, they're doing. Like I said, the next episode <laughs> looks good. Uh, I can't wait to watch it to see if maybe they do something that I'm like, yeah, that was awesome. That was a good episode, and I can't wait for more. Uh, but we'll see because. Until the mid-season finale and then this uh, second mid-season premiere comeback, um, yeah. it besides those two episodes, I've enjoyed the show until then. Mm -hmm. And then it was just those two episodes, and it was like they were just episodes. It, I didn't even care that they were Gotham episodes. They were just episodes of a show. So here's hoping they do something. I, I can't wait to watch the next one and review yeah. that. Because yeah, that should, that should be... be I, I, I hope it's a good season overall. Yeah. I, mean, I hope these are like... Two hiccups along a, a decent season. Yeah, absolutely. Season. absolutely. Um, I don't think, like, I've liked the show. I you liked it a lot more than me. Yeah. I enjoy the show, definitely. I, I think, like, we're kind of flip sides of that. Like, you yeah. liked it a lot more than, than Agents, whereas, yeah, like, yeah. Agents, for me, is really good. Right. Uh, overall, because uh, it, it's it's portrayed the characters the way I think they're, they, they need to be portrayed, and they should be portrayed. So, like, which leads into our next point. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll talk about Agent Carter next. Uh, which is interesting because I think the way they did this second season of, of S.H.I.E.L.D. tying it in, in with Agent Carter is really good. They had a couple of moments of like Agent Carter flashbacks in season two, in the first half of season two, and now mm -hmm. it's and now it's very much like, you know, we're watching the entire series of, uh, well, mini-series, I guess, of uh, Agent Carter, and I like it. I think it's really good. I think it plays for its time period amazingly. Um... The, the, like, male dominance thing that plays in that show is hilarious to me, especially knowing that she can kick all their butts. But at the same <laughs> time, it is the era. It is the era, absolutely. It is the era. Absolutely. Which is, I, as I'm watching it, all I keep thinking is that flashback moment they had in season one of, of S.H.I.E.L.D., mm -hmm. where, like, Stark calls her to, like, get her onto S.H.I.E.L.D. Remember that? Where he calls and, like, get, you know, put her on the S.H.I.E.L.D., you know, put her up, put her on, she's gonna, she's gonna come run S.H.I.E.L.D. with me. And the guy's just like, uh, yes, Mr. Stark, yeah, totally. I can't remember that. Oh, yeah, it was, it was, I can't remember that. It, it, it was, it was fantastic, it was fantastic, but, like, it was, um, you know what, I lied, that's not a, it's not a flashback, that's, uh, one of the one-shots, so you haven't seen that. I haven't seen that, because I haven't seen any of the one-shots, well, well, except, uh, the, um, the real... Oh, the Mandarin one. Mandarin, yeah. Um, so, but, yeah, Mandarin. it's, it, I like the show, I think it started well, um, it puts her in that position of, like, she, she feels underused and underappreciated, and with good reason, like, she went from save the world with Captain America to, like, desk duty. And it's like, hey, we've got an all-points bulletin. Man the phones. Dick, man, like... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, it's tough to say how I feel about it, because I... I enjoy the show for what it is because I knew that, see, going into this show, even if it is Marvel, mm -hmm. going into this show, this is before most things happen. You know, you did have Captain America, but then... Nothing else. Nothing else. He froze. Which, which, which yeah, so which, after which that, means it was a, a nice blank nothing. slate. Yeah, it was a blank slate. So that's why I'm not expecting superhumans. I'm not sure. expecting, uh, you know, yeah, is Stark going to have some crazy inventions? They've shown that. You see that awesome. in the first three episodes, you see inventions and, and, and certain things that shouldn't be there at the time, like the typewriter that one dude had, and uh, that's a communication device where he was like, 
typing and then somebody else was typing. That's how they were. Oh yeah, it was a, it was yeah. wireless transmission. It was wireless, but it's one it's one of those things word. that in the Marvel lore it, it fits because yeah, it they, fit. they had that kind of like crazy like futuristic stuff in the old books. Right, because. Stark. I mean, Stark. Howard well, because, Stark is still well, there. Because He's Stark, inventing stuff. So, right. Because um, of, because of Stark. Because of several people sure. who are around. Uh, and I, I really like the fact that they tied in Anton Vanko. Um, was it in the second one? Um, Vanko is a, a, a back or Whiplash. Oh. So okay. that was that was his dad. Ah. So I that I, I loved that. Okay. Loved that okay. when he walked in and they're like Vanko. I'm like, why do I know that name? And he started speaking with a Russian accent. I'm like. Oh, that's great because it was perfect because it's one of it's those little things that bridge this world together. It you know the Marvel Cinematic Universe overall I think is just portrayed really well really because is. of all these different little facets of it. It's not you know like right now DC's DC is climbing an uphill battle like they've got one established film and that's all they have to run off of and they're I mean they're they're obviously they're charging forth. You know, at full speed, which is great yeah, for them. And I hope they honestly. I, I I love both industries, so I hope they they do succeed in what they're doing because I enjoyed Man of Steel quite a lot. So I hope they continue. But yeah, absolutely, Marvel's got an amazing tie-in with everything, and mm -hmm. and that's why I think it kind of hurt for me, Agents of Shield, because they had to minimize what they could do in that first mm -hmm. season so they could connect it to Captain America. And, and it was a great connection. I mean, they did a great job doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, I feel like for me, it took away from the show a little bit. And I know for others as well that, that watch the series, it, they've experienced the same thing. But I gave it till season one, end of season one. I didn't just stop after three episodes. I could have, but I didn't. Um, and, and I'm glad I didn't because I am definitely enjoying season two a little more. There's definitely a lot more going on. I can't wait to see what they do with... Uh, um, Sky, Daisy Johnson, yeah, Daisy Johnson, and, or Sky's character, and and how that works out, and if they're gonna toss in powers from uh, the Inhumans, and, and uh, how that that's works. gonna be really cool. And I think I think the show is finally becoming uh, a way to set things up that wasn't maybe it wasn't planned for but you know they're talking about like we're going to avoid origin story movies, right? Because right. that's kind of the big thing is like Captain America, the first movie was great, Winter Soldier was like. Amazing, like yeah, the comparison yeah, is was, ridiculous. Yeah, it was ridiculous. But because you had to tell the Captain America story, because it's never been told on big screen, right? Like there have been Captain America movies, right. and I say that in quotes because I've seen about ten minutes in total of them, and they're awful. So, yeah, yeah. but like but that's, you that's, had to do that's that. tangents. We're going, we're going too far now. We're going into. What do you say? Like you, you have to talk about like this stuff is all interconnected. So right. like they're they're moving away from those origin stories. So I think. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and even Agent Carter can serve as a show to like set things up because we're talking like Ant-Man's coming out this year. Ant-Man, uh, Scott Lang is going to be the main Ant-Man, right? So that's the younger Ant-Man. The guy who invents the stuff is older, old enough that he could be on the show. They could set up that's Hank true. Pym on Agent Carter, that which would true. be the genius way to do it because then it's like you've got people who are, yeah, they're excited it's a Marvel movie, but Ant-Man is... Like Captain America, Iron Man, all that stuff, and right, like that's down true. here and off that's to the true. side. That's true. They couldn't set that up. Here's my thing about Agent Carter, though. I am, I'm, I'm a little disappointed. I'm gonna say why, and I know what you're gonna say, but it's what's Jarvis. I wish they used Jarvis. I the same guy. The same guy, and because it, it's a mini series, so I can't see why he would have said no. Because uh, well, I don't even. I mean, say, I get I get money. I understand well, that money sometimes. Money is one thing, but he point, has to be old. But he is older. The guy that plays Jarvis, he's in his forties. I mean, he might not look it, but he's definitely in his forties. You know about the guy in movies? Yeah. Yeah, but he doesn't look it exactly. But you don't see him in the movie. Like Jarvis has to be an old British butler. Like he he has to. But I understand that, but you don't see him in the movies, though. Doesn't right, I know, but it would be it would be really weird. To, to get that across. And I don't think it's, it's you know, it's not meant to be him. It's meant to be a representation of him. Sure, I understand that. But, I mean, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I just... I, I like, about, I like I, him. No, no, no. I like the guy that's acting him, by the way. I don't want anything. I don't know that actor, actually. I, I don't uh, remember him out of a, anything. I don't, yeah. I think but, I might uh, one thing. I he's mean. definitely doing a great job as Jarvis. It's just, I... Uh, I like how they're portraying the character. Yeah, I, I like definitely the, like I like the, the like... 
oh yeah, you need me right now? Well, let me see. I gotta do. I gotta do the yeah, lights. Yeah, I gotta yeah, do yeah. the linens. I'm like now, right, I can do the linens later. <laughs> yeah, it's, like it's cool because he's he's very much like he's very much the butler, very much like a clean man, and he's you know he's. He takes care of his, you know, Stark's house as well as his own house. Yeah. Um, and it's one of those things that, like, he prioritizes his wife over other right. things. Uh, even though he, like, has this little little bit of inkling to kind of be a, a hero in his own right. The thing is, is I definitely like that, once again, I like the actor that's portraying Jarvis and he's doing a great job. Um, the jokes, though. See, to me, the jokes are not hitting. I don't laugh when I hear them. Like, I, I, I just recently started watching Castle, finally. Uh... And those he does jokes in that, and I'm but there is dying. A different period no, of jokes. but I, I understand that. But it's actually the same type of jokes. It's it's one of those things like, okay, fine, and like it's one of those like hit jokes where you know, oh, I gotta do it. It's just like that, just like that one instance joke that you just mentioned. You see that in Castle a lot, and it just in Castle it hits right. I mean, it just you well, start. Yeah, dying. but it's also Nathan Fillion. Like it's the delivery. It's the type of. I mean, the the. The humor, I think, in this, because both the primary actors are English, drives more, uh, pulls more on a dry wit. So it's not meant to be burst out laughter. Sure. It's meant to be humorous. It is and, uh, meant to be humorous. It's not, meant to be, it's not meant to be funny. It's meant to be humorous, which is, like, is a slight difference. I don't know what it is, but it's, it never hits with me. I, like, I never get a chuckle out of it. I never get a smile I, I didn't get it. any chuckles out of it either, honestly. Like, I watched the episodes. They were good. And, it, again, it's... Because it's a limited series, it, it plays to me, again, going back to the idea of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it plays like a limited series. It's short run, it doesn't have to have the best writing, it doesn't have to, you know, it doesn't have to have the best art. Right. So, now granted, in this, the effects are fantastic, yeah, especially yeah, for a TV show. Uh, the effects are fantastic, I think the acting is really good. Um, the script may not be the best, right. but it's it's build up. Like, it's, it's a lot of script that a it has no source material right you know it just ha it just doesn't okay. because of the way it's set up sure uh sharon carter is meant to be uh in the future she, right. yeah she's meant to be captain america's 90s girlfriend right right, right, right. uh so the fact that she's an older you know i'm sorry peggy carter right uh sharon carter is her grandniece or something right right, right. Uh, but peggy carter is like a footnote right um peggy carter wasn't really anybody that important to, as far as i recall um and it's it's not like she wasn't one of the original Shield members, as far as I know. So it's like this stuff where again building up to that moment in sure. in the one shot, which you should definitely watch. Building up to that moment, like now you have to have you know eight episodes or maybe more if they do another one next year, of building up to this one moment where Stark calls and says, "Hey, send her my way. We're gonna open up Shield headquarters." And it's like you have to fill in this story of like how we get to that and it's i think a lot of it is not necessarily forced but you you got to make it up as you go so they had to make up this entire story that has no source material but the thing is to me is when it comes down to shows like this especially a mini series you don't have a lot of time to build up a yeah. story okay but like, you're, I you're get it. like i understand you know when when they said when when i was complaining about uh, agents of shield and a lot of other people um I believe it was Josh Sweden or or um, who's the other guy, the main guy. Um, Josh Sweden? No, 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 the main guy. Feige. Um, Feige, yes. Uh, yeah, well, they said Feige that came out. He was like, "Well, you know what? In in a movie, we only have two hours to tell a story. Where in a series, I have all this time to develop characters. Well, that's the case, but in many series, you don't." Uh, you have the time to tell that story. Right. I mean, he's and got, that he's got story, a total, total of eight hours, roughly. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so, like, even though it's still more more than two hours of a movie, you still only have eight hours compared to 24 episodes to, or, or uh, multiple seasons. So, you got to build that a little faster, a little better. I'm not saying by any means that it was terrible. I just... Once again, it's it's one of those things where it's not it's not you know it's not attracting me to the story. It's not it's not hooking me, mm -hmm. and because it is a mini series, well now your excuse isn't oh I have time to build this. No, you got to hook. You got to hook because it is a mini series, and you got to show the story in a better fashion. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying if, in my opinion, if Agents of Shield and Hook you right off the bat and you stopped at three episodes, most likely most of those people are not going to enjoy Agent, uh, Agent Carter either. 
because it's just it, it it's, doesn't yeah, but like it you doesn't gotta look, just looking at numbers a lot more people watch it sure absolutely uh, without a doubt the second or the, the second week so the third episode uh, had five point some million which is I think higher than almost every episode of Agents of Shield except the first one because it had a little bit over six right um, the first episode had over six and now people are talking about like oh well, this huge drop in ratings like no this for going from six point sum to five, a little bit over five, is nothing when Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. ran two seasons at basically two. Right. Like, these numbers, A, are, are kind of moot these days because you have DVR, you have, like, things that aren't counted. You have things that, you have online presentations, you have all this stuff that just isn't right. part of that number. Um, and... At the same time, like, hey, that's a huge, huge show watching. Sure. And it's a female lead character. It's a female in a superhero world. I don't want to say superhero, but she's a female lead in a superhero world that I think is bringing in a different kind of audience. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I think I agree with you. If, if people weren't hooked with season one of, of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., this is definitely going to be something different to, like, I don't think it's going to be as attractive as... A castle, or you know, a grim, or whatever. Uh, but I think, I think it's, yeah. I really think they're at a point where they don't care about the numbers. Sure. They they just want to tell that story, which is kind of where I feel Gotham is as well. Is they're like they're like we don't really care how you want to see it. We're just gonna tell you the story how we want to tell it. Here's the thing, and I'm I'm perfectly happy that they don't care about numbers. I just wish they would. To me, it feels like okay, yeah, you you want to tell your story your way. When I look at story creating, right, if I ever wanted to create a story, I want to make something exciting that hooks right off the bat and never stops. That's kind of where I look at it, and a lot of shows do that. But certain shows, unfortunately, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Agent Carter, for me, just don't have that. Like, they just don't hook right away. And sometimes, because they don't hook right away or take a few episodes or maybe a half a season to hook, it's like almost too late. So at that point, I've lost so much interest that even that hook is like, well, whatever. It's just another episode. And that's kind of the issue that I'm having is I want to be excited for it. I really do because I love all Marvel. I mean, I, just, I really do. I, I've, I've never... I hate the... Uh, I'm not going to go into this tangent. When I say I love all Marvel, I really do. I've enjoyed all the movies. Even some of the ones that weren't so great, I still enjoyed all Marvel movies. For, for instance, like Iron Man 3, I enjoyed the movie. I hated that they misrep misrepresented it, sure. what it was sure. in the trailers. So at the end of the day, I still enjoy everything that's Marvel. But for some reason, these two shows, for me, especially Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., like I said, it is getting better. But I, I'm almost worried that I've lost so much interest from the first season that even if season two is so much better... It's still not going to really change how I feel, and, and and Agent Carter feels almost the same way. Maybe that's due to what Agents of Shield has done to me. Maybe that's why I'm not as excited for it. But like, like I said, the jokes, they're there, and most other shows, I'd probably smirk or laugh or even laugh hard, you know. But, sure. But for some reason, with with this series, it's not hitting, and and that's not just the, it's not just the jokes, you know, like the the. The feminism, like the whole, you know, oh, this is a man's world, you know, you're going to go get the coffee or man the phones. I get it, you know, it's it's that era, and I don't mind it because, I mean, it, it is, that is basically typical for that era. But at the same time, once again, it doesn't bother me, nor does it, like, make me chuckle, nor does it, you know, like, I have no care for it, that that, that was thrown in there. And I don't know... Like I said, I'm, I'm I'm hoping it changes. I definitely will watch the miniseries all the way because I do like I like the actors. I think they're doing a good job. Uh, I don't think the acting in any way is bad. I think everybody on that show is doing a great job and and and, uh, and you know creating this world where we've never experienced that era. You know what I'm saying? Like we've never seen the actual era, and for them to bring that to life for us. They're doing a great job. Right. I think the writing is definitely good on it. It's just for some reason, it for me, it still doesn't have that hook to it. 
and I'm worried that I won't enjoy the series, even if it is a mini series, I won't enjoy it as much as I should due to the fact that I was disappointed with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and right. so now that's kind of pouring over probably to this series because I'm sure I should probably like it more than I do and like I said, everything about it is good but for some reason it just it, it didn't it didn't leave me with the suspense so I can't wait to see the next episode sure. of the deal. Uh, I, 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 and I'll have to agree with that. Uh, I don't think it's it doesn't have that that drive to the, to the next episode. I mean, for to the very few shows have done that for me though. Like that's like Dexter is one of them. Dexter, um, definitely, yeah. And that was strictly because of the development of the character. You know, I wanted to see what happened to him next. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's one of those things that again, there's really not many shows that I've been super excited for the next episode. Uh, Dexter, NCIS to a point, but even then, only if it's like a continuation episode. Right. Um, and I, like, I'm a big fan of NCIS, but like, there's a lot of episodes that it's just like, all right, episode over. Like, right. I get it. Uh, and like, over the whole story overall, like, fits together really well, which is I think kind of where this is going. Is like, overall, the whole thing is gonna look really nice once right, it's done. Right. Sure. Absolutely. But like that, in, that during the process, it's like. All right. Yeah, it was... All right. Like, it was, it's like, yeah, it's like so episode, episode, episode. And then, like, then a year from now when you See sit down and... Connect. Sit down and watch, you know, Agent Carter and then the first, like, first Captain America, Agent Carter, and then whatever kind of order right. they're in, then it'll, like, it'll look really cool together. It'll look really, you know, it'll come together really well. And and this is actually a perfect example in, in the first... In actually, in all the episodes so far, they've used flashbacks of her working with Captain America. So you see the first movie of Captain in this show. Sure. And because that's you know that's one of her big sure, driving absolutely. forces. Absolutely. So yeah. So that's something that she's going to have a reminder of in the show. And even at that point, for some reason, it's still not hooking. I like it. I enjoy that mm-hmm. they bring that in. But for some reason, I still can't get some kind of excitement for the show. And, and, and it, just, I mean, I, th- I think. I, I, I agree with you on that. Like, it's it's definitely, that's, but I don't think it's meant to, you know, invite excitement. I think it's, it's, it's intended. It's basically meant to tell a story. It's intended to, yeah, it's intended to, like, I think, give you that idea of, like, why, why she feels the way she feels. Kind of, like, to justify who she is. Sure. And where, why she's doing the things she's doing. Um, I don't know, I think we're at a point where now, you know, one of the, one of her co-workers has died. Right. The 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 Stark. So like right now we're we're at a clean slate effectively. Right. Like the Stark stolen weapons. That was kind of the plot of the whole first three episodes of like Stark was branded an uh, outlaw and, a, and a, a traitor because of his technology was stolen and was popping up on the black market. Right. So now she's resolved that basically because all his stolen stuff is now in lockup. Yep. So they found the stuff. They put it in lockup. So now now I think is when the show will really grow because it, you're not like taking this like you know, hook moment of, right. like, Howard Stark, like, this thing that you guys remember, and then, like, well, now we've done with that, now you've got to, you really, now the next episode has to re-hook you if the first three did. Sure. Because now you've, you've resolved that story. Well, Like, I get still, it, I get it, he's still, like, a traitor. He's still a traitor in most people's eyes right now, because that's how they branded him, and even though they got his devices, they found his devices... He's still a traitor. So even though oh well we have his devices, clearly they're not everywhere in the world. But that being said, he's still branded as a traitor because they believe that he was the one trying to potentially sell those mm-hmm. devices. Yeah, and, and the, which the, wasn't the case. But yeah, we have this mystery character, which I th- I thought that was a really nice touch in this last episode. Like the guy who killed her coworker was, or the person or whatever that killed them, uh, was very much the. the the big baddie, right? right? That's that's the the either the representative of the main evil, and I'm I'm going to wager that it's Hydra. Um, sure, I'm, it would just make sense yeah. um, for that to tie in. It's going to be something along the lines of Hydra, somebody important in Hydra, possibly even the guy who just died on Shield, which which would be cool for them to utilize that because it would make sense. Mm-hmm. It would definitely make sense because. I forget we, his name. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but he's definitely been involved in that world for a very long time. He's yeah, he's been around involved. even longer than the period that we're looking exactly. at Exactly. So, overall, I wouldn't mind seeing that connect. That that definitely would be cool, and, and, and I think, overall, that would be a good hook. Um, but 
the problem is, is this, if they take too long to utilize that, right? It might be a, 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 a like. Well, a I mean, I point. think I think he would have to be a, a, a reveal. You know, he would have to be a big reveal, and yeah, they might not even do it until the last episode. Sure, absolutely. But absolutely. I think I think his you know his reach and his influence is what we're going to be fighting. Uh, you know, we we. <laughs> uh, yeah. What we're gonna see here fight is his reach, his, his reach and his influence, and like what he can do without revealing himself. Right. Because especially at that time, like you don't have all this technology to like really hide you or you know put you anywhere. Yeah. But at the same time, on the the justice side of things, you don't have the technology to find these things. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, Jarvis called in a tip, and I'm thinking like, oh, he's got fingerprints on there. But I'm thinking with 20, 20th, 21st century mentality of right. like he left fingerprints on there. Which they There's had voice matching none of software. That, right. And it's like, it's the forties. No point. one freaking knows. Like yeah. they don't. Like, I think fingerprinting just started around that just time. Just started. Yeah. So it's like they're not. A they don't know that it's right there. They don't have phone tracing technology. Right. So we're we're still at that point where like a, a switchboard at a phone company is literally thirty women and just like doing this, literally switching things on a board. Yep. And like that stuff that doesn't exist anymore. So it's not traceable. It's, it's just one of those things that. It's it's gonna be interesting to see how they deal with this evil when it really can't be found. <laughs> yeah. So overall, for me, uh, you know, the two two shows that we reviewed today, Gotham, meh. I can't wait to see the next episode to see if it changes how I'm feeling right now. Right. Uh, and then Ag uh, Agent Carter, I'm definitely gonna give it the whole mini series. I'm not worried about that. I just hope that they don't try to continue to stretch it like they did with agents and just start baiting us right now because it does we know the be, character yeah, we know really nothing to build so at this it's, point it's, it's just it's like to start. tell me the story yeah it's just it's just tell us the story because it is a mini series so they just tell the story just go with it you know release the big big things that you want to release because that's going to hook us and that's going to give us a better better feeling for the story in my opinion that's that's going to give us a better I experience agree. with the show so that's I, that's basically my review for it. Overall, both so far both are meh for me. I, meh, meh, yeah, basically meh. Uh, it's 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 that's kind of where we're at is uh, <laughs> for these two shows so far for the second half of the 2014 2015 season. It's meh, yeah, meh. But so far this week, I mean, we have everything coming back. I think. I think uh, there's New York of Gotham. There is Gotham, uh, Agent Carter. Agent Carter is tonight. I think Flash is tomorrow. Flash, Arrow. 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 So, I think Constantine's the only thing that's next week. No, Constantine's already came out last week. I have the episode on my DVR. Son of a mother duck. Yep, we didn't watch Constantine. But well, we'll watch Constantine as well. So uh, I next video is going to be even longer. I did. <laughs> yeah, next one's going to be even longer. But I did see somewhere online people posting that the views ratings were not good for the comeback episode of Constantine. Of Constantine. I can see that. And they're almost worried that it's going to get axed. I'm almost certain it's going to get axed. But what's weird is it's not on Fox. Well, because it's on what, NBC? I think it's on NBC because that's what Grimm's on. So it's on NBC, but here's the thing. I, I think... Yeah, I want to say it's NBC. Well, we'll talk about that next time. Yeah, we'll talk <laughs> about it next But yeah, guys, that's basically our review for the two shows. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys next time. See ya.